All right, everyone, our homework last night was page 46, number 1 to 4, and 6 to 10. 1 to 4 and 6 to 10. Any issues of 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? At 7, any others? 10? Is that it? All right, question number seven says, lift off a space shuttle, which we don't even have space shuttles anymore. The Americans don't use them anymore. But for argument's sake, let's say that it is lifting off. It has a mass of 2.04 times 10 to the 6 kilograms, which is, by the way, really, really heavy. 2.06 times 10 to the 6 kilograms. The rocket engines expel 3,700 kilograms of exhaust gas. That's a lot of exhaust gas as well. During the first second of liftoff, 34 tons of exhaust gas in one second. Giving the rocket a velocity of 5.7 meters per second upwards. Now, you release 3,700 kilograms of exhaust gas and you're only making this thing move at 5.7 meters per second. I can run faster than 5.7 meters per second. It's pretty heavy. Okay, it, it's a pretty heavy space shuttle, so it takes a lot of energy to make it go. Uh, I would, I'm not sure, to be honest, the exact numbers, but uh, it wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt it at all. wouldn't doubt it at all. Now, what velocity is the exhaust gas leaving the rocket engines? Now, it says to ignore the change in mass due to the fuel being consumed. consumed. The exhaust gas needed to counteract the force of gravity has already been accounted for and should not be part of this calculation. So, basically what we're saying is, look, the, the space shuttle has a mass of 2 million kilograms, right? 2 million kilograms. The exhaust gas is 3,700 kilograms. So yeah, the space shuttle weighs 3,700 kilograms less than it did as it's being released, right, before, before it was released. But what they're saying here is, look, it doesn't really matter about the change in mass. 3,700 kilograms as a fraction of a couple million kilograms doesn't matter. So don't worry about subtracting any mass or or, uh, or, or the change in mass of the fuel being consumed, whatever. It's not a big deal, okay? It's a conservation momentum problem, obviously. PI is equal to PF. We'll call this M1. This is the mass of the shuttle. This is the mass of the exhaust gas. Um, VI would be zero, right, because it's sitting on the launch pad at zero meters per second. The rocket has a velocity of 5.7 upwards. That's going to be V1F, and we're looking for V2F. The velocity of the exhaust gases. Now, what would you expect those exhaust gases to have for a velocity? Something that's smaller, greater, much smaller, much greater, or equal to the velocity of the rocket itself or of the uh, space shuttle itself? Yep. I would expect it to be much greater as well because the mass is much, much less. And it has to have the same momentum, right? Equal and opposite momentum. So let's say, let's say PI is equal to PF. We don't know exactly what number we're going to get, but what we can do is, is when we get an answer, say, okay, this is much greater, so it matches with our prediction, odds are we're right. Zero initial momentum, M1, V1, F, plus M2, V2, F, uh, 2.04 times 10 to the 6, times uh, 5.7 plus 3,700, times V2, F. So we're just solving for V2F there. We take this number to the left-hand side by subtracting. Okay, divide it by 3,700, and V2F is going to equal negative something, right? which we would expect, right? The rocket goes up, the exhaust gases go down. Right? So what is that? Does anybody have that? 3.1 times 10 to the 3 meters per second, so 3,100 meters per second, so about Mach 10-ish, Mach 9 point something. It probably doesn't make a whole lot of difference at that point, whether it's Mach 9 or Mach 10. It's, uh, it's pretty fast, which we would expect. All right, number eight. Uh, 60 kilogram student, 4.2 kilogram skateboard, traveling south, basketball, uh, he catches the basketball. Oh, good question. Good question. We've talked about something like this a couple of times, right? Where, where we've got different masses. Sometimes we 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 combine the masses that are given. Sometimes we don't. We've got three masses here. 
a 60 kilogram student, a 4.2 kilogram skateboard, and a 0.585 kilogram baseball. The guy's on the skateboard, he catches the baseball. The skateboard, the guy, and the baseball become one object effectively after this interaction takes place. What are we going to do for masses here? Are we going to keep them separate, M1, M2, M3? Are we going to combine them? What are we going to do here? Good. Let's make this M1. Okay. Every once in a while, they like to throw that at us, right, and, and confuse us a little bit. Okay. They could have just as easily said, a guy in a skate, a student in a skateboard have a mass of 64.2 kilograms. Okay. They want to see if we know that because they don't separate, we, we combine those right from the beginning. Okay. We do. Okay. We do know that. We're going to call that M1, 64.2 kilograms. We're going to call this M2. We're going to call this V1I, the velocity of uh, the skateboard on the guy, but it's south, so we're going to remember to make that a negative number. Um, the velocity of the basketball when he throws it, V2I, is 12.6. And then we want to find the student, the skateboard, and the ball immediately afterwards. There's only going to be one object, so we'll call it VF. Uh, 60 times D1I uh, was negative 1.35. Don't forget the negative. We shouldn't because we circled it in red or um, took out our ugly colored highlighter and drew attention to it. Uh, M2, 0 0.585, the basketball. V2I is 12.6. And the combined mass. Oh, wait. What have I done here? Bo? Yeah, yeah. The mass here, M1, is not 60. It's 64.2. Now, the combined mass is, what, 64.785? And now we've got 64.2 plus 0.585 times VF. So you get the number on the left-hand side. Like, get this. And you divide it by 64.785, and that should give us our answer there. So what was the issue with that one? Was it, uh, was it just the masses? Who asked me for that question? Just the masses? I'm sorry? Oh, okay. And finally, question number 10. A 75.6 kilogram volleyball player leaps toward the net to block the ball. At the top of his leap, he has a horizontal velocity of 1.18 meters per second and blocks his volleyball moving to the left. Right, left, right. The volleyball rebounds at 6.85. What's the horizontal velocity of the player immediately after the block? And determine if the collision is elastic. Okay, we haven't seen one of those yet today. We're going to call this M1. We're going to call this V1I. We're going to call this M2. We're going to call this V2I. Remember, it's negative because it's to the left. The volleyball, the volleyball, that's going to be uh, V2F rebounds at 6.85 meters per second to the right. Let's find V1F. Get the negative there, negative 12.5, because it's moving to the left. Uh, 12.5 is also to the left. Um, wait a second here. Volleyball rebounds. So we don't know this one, do we? 
we're looking for B1F. The volleyball rebounds at uh, 6.85 to the right, so it's going to be positive. Let's pull out the calculator and do this one as a group here. So we're going to get the left-hand side here first, 75.6 times 1.18. We're going to add to that 0.275 times negative 12.5. All right, got the left-hand side. Now let's take the, this term right here over by subtracting. It's positive on the right-hand side. Take it over to the left by subtracting. Use some brackets, though, 0.275 times 6.85. All right, so now 83.8 equals 75.6 times V1F divided by 75.6. And we end up getting 1.1096, which we want to round to three digits. Okay, why do you think I wrote down the unrounded number there? Why did I, Devin, why did I put the unrounded number there for V1F? Why was that important this time to not just write my final answer? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to use it for question B, right? And I don't want to use my rounded number for question B. I want to use my unrounded number. So determine if it's elastic or not. Uh, what does elastic mean? If it's elastic... We find that momentum is conserved, yes, and also, right. So let's see if kinetic energy is conserved. Let's get EKI and let's get EKF. Uh, M1, 75.6. Don't forget to square that. Probably one of the most common mistakes here is forgetting to square the V. Okay. What I find a lot of people do is, especially come test time when everything is together, test time, by the way, which is coming up on Monday, okay, next Monday, um, a lot of people will calculate, they'll say one-half MV instead of one-half MV squared. They start mixing up kinetic energy and momentum. Right? They combine the equations. Instead of one-half MV squared or MV, they'll go one-half MV. Okay, it's one-half MV squared. Uh, mass 2 was 0.275. And why did I drop the negative there for V2I? Why is that not important? In fact, why is it not even uh, relevant to be there? Why shouldn't it be there at all? Maddie, why do I not put the negative 12.5 in there? Just positive. Right, V is, speed is a scale where the direction doesn't matter, so don't put the direction in there. Okay, we get a number for this. Okay, I want you guys to calculate that number right now unless somebody has it. We'll get EKF, same idea. 75.6 times, this time V1F is 1.1096, square that. Uh, V2F was 6.85. Don't forget to square that. Okay, this half of the room, okay, I want you guys to calculate EKI. This half of the room, I want you guys to calculate EKF. 74.117. We're going to round that to 74.1 joules, right? We want to round it to the right number of significant figures so that if it happens to be close, we can make our judgment as to whether it's elastic or inelastic. What about EKF? 53.0 joules. So we predicted it would be less. Sure enough, it is. What does that tell us about whether it's elastic or not? It is not elastic, right. It's inelastic. All right, got that. Good.
All right, time to take a look at number two here. So this is a 65.2 kilogram student on a 2.5 kilogram skateboard moves at 0.4 to the west. So we got, what do we have here? We have an object trait here. Um, I'm going to call it object one, two. It's, it's both of them combined, right? It has a mass of 67.7 kilograms, and it has a velocity of 0 0.40 meters per second to the west. Now, uh, the guy jumps off the skateboard with a velocity of 0.38 at 30 degrees south of west. So after the collision, we'll say object number one, the guy, is going at 30 degrees south of west with a velocity of 0 0.38 meters per second and a mass of 65.2 kilograms. We're going to make a prediction where the skateboard is going to go when he jumps off. There was momentum to the left. We still have momentum to the left with the guy. There was no momentum up or down. There's got to be afterwards no momentum up or down. The guy goes down. The skateboard must go up. Now, the skateboard could conceivably go up and to the right instead of up and to the left, because we already have left momentum before and after. So we could have right momentum afterwards if the total combined momentum afterwards ends up being equal to the same leftward momentum that we had before. But in all likelihood, it's going to go to the left. We know it's going to go up. It's probably going to go to the left. Tell you what, though, even if you draw the diagram wrong, it's OK for that third vector that you draw wrong. We like to draw it correct because it helps us to visualize the question. But if you make a mistake with that red vector and draw it in the wrong place, you'll see that in the end. Okay, this is just for visualization purposes. Now, this one and this one, we got to get those ones right. This one, it's not the end of the world if we get that one wrong. OK, the mass of that is 2.50 kilograms. Let's find the speed of it. Now, watch very carefully what I'm going to do here. If you were in my Physics 20 class last year, you'll remember this phrase that I used every time we saw something like this in vector analysis. Okay, when we saw a funny angle, an angle that wasn't 90 degrees, okay, we recited one phrase, and that phrase was, I don't like funny angles. Remember that, guys? Those of you who had me, I don't like funny angles. I don't like funny angles. I don't like 30 degrees. So get rid of it. Whenever you see a funny angle, go off to the side and get rid of it. Here's my 30 degrees. This is the x component of it. Here's the y component. The speed is 0 0.38 meters per second. Let's get rid of that funny angle. Okay, let's say cosine 30 degrees is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. I get 0 0.329. Anybody else get that? Seven? Let's do the y component here now. Uh, the y component is the opposite side of the triangle. So let's say sine 30 degrees is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. And that one's going to be simply 0 0.19 meters per second. So what we've effectively done here is changed the 0 0.38 into a 0 0.329 and a 0 0.19. If I want. I can even redraw it like this. I don't have to, but if I want to, I can. So now that one vector that was at a funny angle of 30 degrees doesn't have any funny angles anymore. It's got just 90 degree angles, just like the questions we've done before have. That's 0 0.38, by the way. We're never going to use that again, because we just separated it into the values that we want, our x's and y's. OK, let's, let's do our x component here. Pi equals Pf. Mvi equals m1 v1 f plus m2 v2 f. 67.7 times negative 0 0.40 equals m1, which is 65.2 times negative 0 0.329. 0.329 because that's the x component of that funny angled vector. Right? We just found that off on the side there. Plus m2, m2 at a mass of 2.5 kilograms, v2f would be what we're looking for there. So we saw for v2f, 
for the x component. Listen, then we do the same thing for the y component. But this time for the y component, V1y won't be negative 0.329. What will V1y be? When you do the y components, you're using this one, right? 0 0.19 or negative 0 0.19. All right, finish that question for tomorrow, please. Guys, question one and two. And then we'll pick it up there. Have a good night, everyone.